Now, in this discussion, we've discussed a lot of diseases, but I think there's a whole group that feels left out. Those with diabetes and heart disease, because they're related. Yes. So you mentioned them in the paper. Yes. Talk about that. Okay, that's a huge topic. Right. <laughs> we'll see how far I can get with it. I do have another paper, actually, that talks about uh, diabetes and heart disease. And uh, we particularly focused on this uh, molecule called ENOS, endothelial nitric oxide synthase. Just which ENOS for me, thank you. ENOS, <laughs> yes, we won't say that again. <laughs> and ENOS is a really, really interesting molecule. And one of the things that we identified is that ENOS produces, we believe, ENOS produces sulfate. We have this paper and we discuss how this is feasible. ENOS resembles uh, enzymes found in bacteria that produce sulfate. In the same, it has the mechanism to do it, and those bacteria depend on sunlight. So we think enos makes sulfate in the skin in exposure to sunlight. So part of the issue is lack of sunlight exposure um, as contributing, and it's known that sunlight, um, sunny places have less heart disease. Mm -hmm. So it's um, connected to heart disease. Um, enos makes a sulfate. The sulfate connects to the cholesterol. The skin also provides a great deal of cholesterol. The skin cells produce cholesterol, and that cholesterol then gets combined with, so this is well known, gets combined with sulfate to produce cholesterol sulfate, and the skin is probably the biggest producer of cholesterol sulfate for the body. And so with this sunlight allowing it to make the sulfate. So the cholesterol sulfate then is distributed, as I said, and provides cholesterol and sulfate to all the tissues. So when, so enos is a CYP enzyme. CYP. Yes. The cytochrome P450 metabolic pathway that is interrupted because glyphosate comes along and says, uh, uh you ain't working anymore. That's right. That so works. I suspect that glyphosate may be messing up enos's ability to make sulfate, which then impairs the release of sulf cholesterol sulfate from the skin, which then causes cholesterol and sulfate deficiency throughout the body, which I think is the underlying cause of all the diseases. So you're saying cholesterol deficiency. Most cholesterol people think that deficiency, cholesterol, that's right. Some people say that, well, a lot of people say that it's too much cholesterol. That's right. And there's too much cholesterol in those packaged up things, LDL and HDL, because there isn't enough of the cholesterol sulfate. The sulfated cholesterol can travel freely in the blood, but you don't have that, so you have to have more of the other ones, and that's why it's elevated. More than that, the cholesterol piles up in the arteries that are feeding the heart. Now, one thing I find interesting that nobody seems to ask is why is it that heart disease occurs in the heart? If I were smart, like biology is, and I had some crud that I needed to get rid of, I needed to park it somewhere, the last place I would put it in the art is in the arteries leading to the heart. That's like the wrong place to put it. If I'm going to block some arteries... It's like your children's tricycle. Yeah, just put it in the front, the front door, you know, just right in front. In fact, put it just below the steps so as people are leaving. So, yeah, the body's a little more intelligent than that. Yeah, so, so the fact on? that that plaque is piling up exactly in the place that provides uh, blood supply to the most critical organ in the body makes you think that that plaque might be providing something to that organ. And what I think it is providing is cholesterol sulfate. And the cholesterol sulfate um, being... Why is the heart? Why does the heart need cholesterol? The, sulfate? the heart tremendously needs both of those, uh, cholesterol and sulfate. First of all, it's a muscle, so it, of course it uses a huge amount of energy. And the cholesterol, as you recall, will protect from ion leaks, and ion leaks will exhaust the cell because it has to keep using up all of its energy to pack the ions on the other side. So the cholesterol in the membrane is really important for that. Um, and then the uh, uh, lipid rafts, which are these places that have high, high concentrations of cholesterol, are absolutely essential for the contraction of the muscle that's going to cause the heart to beat. So if you don't have enough lipid rafts, then you're going to have deficiencies in um, uh, contracting. And also when p potassium starts leaking out of the cell because of the lack of cholesterol, then it starts to substitute calcium because calcium is a bigger molecule. And the cell gets too much calcium in the cytoplasm, but it needs the calcium to be in these internal store places in order to be able to contract. So that weakens its ability to contract as well. And then the, and then the sulfate is what's going to allow it to clean up garbage. So it has these proteins that are, that are broken that need to be uh, recycled. And it needs the sulfate in order to be able to do that. So it ends up getting piled up with crud that it can't get rid of. And the cell again becomes dis uh, disabled because of that. So there's all kinds of different ways in which the cells are getting messed up. Also, we believe, and this is something we're working on, that the sulfate plays a critical role in the electrical system that communicates, that allows the heart to actually beat in an organized fashion. So you get into this kind of arrhythmias because of the insufficient sulfate. We haven't proved this yet, but we're working on that on that idea. You just covered almost everything that a cell needs to do. It has <laughs> energy, it's a, it's a cleanup, and it's got electrical impulses, and they're all disrupted needed. by the inadequate cholesterol sulfate. And the really interesting thing is that Elevated homocysteine is a very good risk factor for heart disease. Homocysteine is a sulfur-containing 
molecule that can become sulfate. I think I talked about that earlier. Homocysteine becomes yeah. uh, converted to sulfate in the presence of inflammation. It needs the inflammation in order to be able to convert, be converted to sulfate. And so you have inflammation in the artery wall that's a key factor in heart disease. And the homocysteine actually induces inflammation. This is well known, well established. In the, it goes in and it attaches itself to the plaque and it causes the cells to release superoxide. And the superoxide is used to make sulfate from the homocysteine. And the macrophages that are in the plaque are holding on to cholesterol, waiting for the opportunity to let it go as cholesterol sulfate. So it's the sulfur deficiency that's causing the, the cholesterol to pile up in the artery wall in the plaque. And then the homocysteine comes in to use it to create the... the, the homocysteine uses the inflammation, inflammation to make the sulfate, and then the sulfate gets combined to the cholesterol. So instead of enos making sulfate, because enos is broken, it is made this other way that involves inflammation in the artery wall. And that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. So the inflammation damages the artery wall, and you get into all the different problems. Of course, you get the blockage because the cholesterol is all piled up in there. And the cholesterol needs fat in order to be able to be stored. Cholesterol has to be stored with fat, or it, it, they, they go together. So you've got this fat and cholesterol in the artery wall, waiting for an opportunity to be delivered as cholesterol sulfate once there's some uh, homocysteine and some sulfur and some superoxide. So there's like all this stuff waiting to happen that's causing this buildup. And the reason is because the heart is desperate for cholesterol and sulfate. It's the opposite of what they're saying. I mean, I do not understand how they can demonize cholesterol the way they do, because if you look, everyone who knows anything about cholesterol as a researcher knows that it's absolutely essential, so many ways to the body. There's very little about cholesterol that's bad, and but yet the, they've made it out to be a demon. But the higher levels of low cholesterol may indicate health problems. Low cholesterol is actually a much more uh, serious I mean, I mean, problem higher, than high cholesterol. Higher, higher but, levels of the bad right, cholesterol. Right. Right, the high LDL indicates problems, but the problems have to do with cholesterol sulfate deficiency. Oh, okay. That's what's causing the LDL to be high. All right. So you need the cholesterol sulfate, and so that's it. So plaque is trying to help out the heart because that organ desperately needs the cholesterol sulfate, and that's why the plaque builds up in the heart. That's a totally different view It is of plaque and totally different view of cholesterol yes. than you'd get from your doctor. It, it's pretty much, yes. Pretty, pretty, much, much, the, pretty much opposite. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah.